Hello there and welcome back to International Fathers. I'm your host and your creator, Nelson L. Moody Sr. <laughs> well, we're coming back to International Fathers with a, another guest of his father and his father in skills. And with that in mind, we're going to go right into our questioning phase. Um, as a child, as a youngster, um, tell us about you with your father. I had a wonderful, wonderful childhood, and I'm glad that you asked me that. Um, my father was a hardworking man, uh -huh. native of Baltimore, Maryland, by way of North Carolina. He had nine boys and one girl, mm. and at that time, uh, raising us in the early 60s and the uh, 70s, uh -huh. it wasn't easy with the different things that were going on. Uh, he worked as a salesman in a clothing store, and he had to be open-minded. Uh, he had to deal with every kind of ethnic group that was, and I got a, a lot of my sense of humor from him. When he came home from work, <clears throat> he was a man in the neighborhood where he had to acquire a lot of suits and ties, uh, mm -hmm. some of them. I learned how to mix and match. He would have to. He couldn't afford a lot with children that many, of okay. course. I watched this man going to the uh, different v veteran stores and get a jacket. Where he would go to uh, nice apparel stores and mix a mm -hmm. shirt here, mm -hmm. pair of pants there, tie his own bow ties. Um, taught uh, each of his sons how to tie a tie. Mm -hmm. Morals and principles. His standard of, of conduct was outstanding. Um, but for some reason, I drew to him the most. Um, okay. He uh, loved the theater, and I loved the theater. Uh, at the same time, it's hard. You don't want to show any preference to one child more than the other. Okay. But we knew we had that feeling towards, you know, when I looked at him. Okay. It was just a certain look. And um, throughout the years, uh, by me going in the field that I went into, drama, acting, it, it, it really shined. But mm -hmm. uh, he still, and that would gave me a good emphasis when I started having my children, not to show favoritism to the utmost. You'd be able to shine, but at the same time, treat every child in a proper way. Okay. Well, let's go back to the beginning part of it. Uh, Dad was there. Dad was there. Full-time, loving, there. wonderful, nurturing father. Wow. You can say that with a capital of nurture. I tell you. <laughs> Something that a lot of children, unfortunately, don't have and didn't have. I myself was one of those children who right. didn't have. But you mentioned something that was interesting in that that nine children eight boys one girl yeah that's the ratio wow um i have to correct you on that eight boys and one princess i stand correct <laughs> one princess so growing up in the neighborhood that you grew up in nobody touched that princess at all at all um it's kind of hard when you growing up and you're trying to make budget uh, with things. Mm -hmm. The boys had hand-me-downs. Okay. I had my first pair of, uh, back then it was called Jack Purcells. It was famous tennis. Got you. I know about that. Time I got mine, they only said Ursel. Ursel. Yeah. It just a little slam on the side. Jack was worn out. Okay. <laughs> but back to the issue of uh, dad. All these children to raise. Right. You had the privilege of calling someone daddy. You had the privilege of getting a hug from somebody daddy. You 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 had the privilege of being surrounded by a role model, someone with setting standards, someone with more, someone with values. You had all of that stuff wrapped up in one person. But yet you still say that there's more things that was added to this. Now you growing up as a child, going through your elementary school, your junior high school, in high school, with dad, with your siblings, and then you yourself became an adult. Let's talk about you and your adult years with your children, man. Well. I had, I want to say one of the greatest examples mm -hmm. to help me when I started having my children, but I'm going to say, as I thank for it, as I look up in heaven and I look at his face sometimes, I had the greatest example of someone to 
had been a father to you. Uh -huh. um, I, when I first became a father, and you see that child in the hospital, and I was blessed enough to see the birth of all my children, that warm feeling that comes over to you when you see that woman that you love, mm. and that child comes out, and that doctor says, Mr. Fed, you have to cut this cord. Mm. And once you cut that cord, I mean, I don't know, it's like a Spike Lee movie. All of a sudden, you see yourself projected, the years come. Automatically, that child comes from an infant mm. to a baby, to a teenager, getting in trouble. You mm -hmm. have to nurse. You mm -hmm. see yourself. You see them you graduate from college, and then you see the next generation. It's absolutely amazing. But <laughs> with that, you take heed and you go back to the years of how your father raised you when you have to say no, when you have to discipline, when you look them in their eyes, when you make sure that you get their phone call from work that one of them has been sent to the hospital okay. and you get there. When you get that phone call and there's a principal that needs you mm -hmm. to come up there. How you come up there and how you represent. My children always respected, yes, I was uh, a, a big man, a strong man, but mm -hmm. when I looked at my child, once I found out that it was an incident in school, I had to let him know through my look, check. I'm still your father. I'm upset with you. This was just eye contact. We did, did this at home okay. prior. I'm going to hear what the one side have to say. Mm -hmm. And I know what you may have done. It's just like having your own private attorney. I'm in there for you, but there an uh, incident did take place. And we okay. have to solve this. And I want to make sure the way that I speak mm -hmm. to the parties involved, yes, I'm not going to make you look bad, but I'm going to let you know that you had an incident. It needs okay. to be taken care of, and your parents are concerned. Very much concerned. Now let's go back a little bit, because you know while some people mention a generational curse when it comes to something negative, right? You passed on. Excuse me. Your father passed on some morals, values, and standards to his children. Yes, he did. We're going to specific target you since you're here on this show, mm -hmm. his son. That you did the same thing with your children. Now, my belief, first of all, before my belief, people on YouTube land around the world, you know what I say, that to me, fatherhood is the best blessing that can ever be bestowed upon a man. With respect to God and a spouse. Now your father is nurturing you and you're nurturing your sons. That eye contact, yeah. You know, that eye contact, that firmness lets a child know dad is talking. One hundred percent. Listen. Don't say nothing. Again, you know I love my mothers out there in YouTube land. But you also know that I also recognize, like you recognize, that there is something significant about Father. When he says something, when he gives that certain look, you straighten it up. Quick, fast, and hurry. That's it. Now let's talk some more about your sons. Just like the uh, uh, most fathers are, um, as you're growing up, um, you want to make sure that they choose a, uh, uh, a nice occupation. Mm -hmm. uh, my family was with the theater, uh, but also we were sports oriented. Okay. My first son, uh, Andre Douglas, uh, as he started growing up, I saw a lot in him through uh -huh. athletics. Um, sometimes you make mistakes. I gave him, I emphasized it too much because of the point of, I. You, you have to listen to your children also. That's a part oh, of it. Oh, yes, yes. You have to listen you to your children. To. I saw a lot of my father in me, but I was being direct. And then I saw uh, something else. No matter what, if you're a son of a preacher, son of a, a president, uh, you gather their ways, their thoughts, but mm -hmm. you cannot be directly like them. I had to still find some of Ronnie David Fed Sr. <laughs> and I had to use what I got from John Fed. And now your father. Now it's past the adolescence. This man's going to make a decision at 17, 16, 17, to go to college, to go into professionalism, go to sports. And you will affect him how you are not open enough to listen to him. Okay. This is his career. Okay. This is him. When I took a step back, said a prayer on it, okay. 
and he was man enough. He was scared, but he said, Dad, I need to talk to you. And I said, well, you know, you give me have baseball practice. You know, okay. some of the scouts gonna be looking at you for Morgan and okay. the schools like that, and okay. to get you out, you're gonna get out of passing now. Dad, I need to talk to you. Right, look, once we talk after baseball, Daddy, I need to talk to you. <laughs> he had never, okay. this is a little boy I'm raising. I never okay. heard a bass in a voice like that. I heard me, I heard my father, okay. I heard my grandfather. I seen okay. the concern. I seen the fright in his eye as he friends back. Okay. But I'm looking at this young man at this time, six foot one, two hundred fifty pounds. Mm -hmm. Wow, boys to men. Mm. I said, son. What do you need? I love my girlfriend, you know, and uh, mm -hmm. I want to be with her, and uh, this is the way I want to be. I wanted to live in the house. I wanted. To, I said you can't have too many here. No. You know, um, y'all can stay. I'll feed you. I'll cook for you myself. Well, well, you know, you know, we, you know, we're gonna have our granddaughter. You know, you want to have granddaughters mm -hmm. and that. And I said, mm -hmm. yeah. I said, things like that do happen, but I can't have it under my roof. Right. Well, then, Daddy, I got to go. I said, son, I'll always be here for you. I'll okay. always love you. And when you can do what's right under the way that God has given me my blessing, mm -hmm. these doors swing open hands. Okay. You'll never have a morsel of food you need. Those babies, mm -hmm. I'll always be my grandchild. But right now, the decision you're making, be sure of that. And I'll back you. And it was mm -hmm. one of the hardest things ever until this day. Um, he, he respects me for that decision because now that he's a father, he sees what was going on, okay. you know, and um, gotcha. that's part of life. That's one son. We right. were, were all three sons the same or did they waver or basically collectively they were headed in the right direction? That the, 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 the path <coughs> that you as their father set, speculated, anticipated, or imagined them going in this direction based upon your teachings as a father? Wow, that's a hard question. But um, as I contemplate and I think about it, yes, they were. They had okay. their grandfather, Reverend John Fair Sr., who was the first uh, minister and opened up a Shiny Star Baptist Church in okay. Baltimore. The grounding from uh, their grandfather, who, like I said, was the um, manager of Gage Clothing Store on Baltimore Street right across from the Civic Center for okay. the longest time. Excuse and, me, let me sure, cut sure, you sure. off. Um, we'll come right back to this uh, response here, but you also know that I like to teach as well as encourage and inspire fathers. Uh, Mr. Fed said Civic Center. For those of you in Baltimore that's <laughs> looking at this, Civic Center, that's what we call it. <laughs> Always have. You new people now call it the <laughs> Baltimore Arena. Baltimore Arena. <laughs> to us, it'll always be the Civic Center. Listen. Go ahead, sir. <laughs> and uh, I made sure that they were around these two gentlemen also uh, yeah. as examples. Okay. The, my grandfather always had to have super ties because of the point of being a minister. My father had mm -hmm. to go to work that way. So the first thing that we did was learn how to tie a tie. Okay. Learn how to know that a man, no matter what situation you're in, as you become a man, you need a black suit and you need a blue suit, no matter what. And uh, different trials and errors okay. they saw of being a man, mm -hmm. of getting ready for that first interview. So they stayed on that road, okay. and they were well, but still, you know, the times changed. It's the 70s coming into the 80s, mm -hmm. and they were good, very, very well balanced. Uh, children, teenagers, they got into their situations, but the blessing is when it was time to really get into something serious, okay. something that would have been detrimental, mm -hmm. that party to stay another hour, stay over at that girl's house before mm -hmm. that father got home, I uh, thank God for that. They always went the other way. They came home. They came home. <laughs> On time. Three sons. Coming through the ranks of that, and fast forward it, you dealt with your sons for such a long time, with them being grown, and basically living for yourself primarily, them and your grandchildren secondary, and then something happened within that time frame. After that, could you elaborate on? 
that with the other chunk. Um, in life, situations and things happen. Mm -hmm. At a time uh, when my first son's mother and I got together, we were very young. We were going, and a lot of times, uh, I I had to work or I used work too much, and I mm -hmm. tell it to a lot of fathers out there. Make sure that you can pay your bills and do things, but don't let the job take away from your relationship. Can you say that one more time? Because somebody just turned their head or went the other way and didn't hear this. When you are a father, and I know it's hard to make ends meet, but when you are blessed, like I was blessed, to get into a Fortune 500 company, you can make the... Um, huge amounts of money don't roam take care home don't let the job and the, the the attributes and all the money that you can receive mm -hmm. take part in being home with your family including especially your wife and when I and when I start letting the job and what we had the two cars the home take place of spending quality time also with my spouse uh, you can let many, many demons in. And at one point, we weren't in love with each other anymore. And the hardest thing there is for children, I think, besides not having a father, is divorce. And my sons became men. Um, the hurt that goes through that time, it, and the healing, uh, psychiatrists, anybody, it, 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 because you became a family. You were always okay. taught to be a family. Mm -hmm. You always taught to love mom and, and love dad. But mm -hmm. at that point, they were men, and they had to make a choice. Mm -hmm. And the choice they made was, you know, to really cater made more to mom. And I understood that. But what hurt me was by coming from a family that mom was always there mm -hmm. and dad was all there, I had to go back to the burning bush. And meaning burning bush, my father and my grandfather. How do I handle this dad? How do I handle this grandfather? Okay. And they could give me, at this time I say their word, but as they would give me their ideas of what to do, I looked mm -hmm. in their eyes. They were spellbound because they never experienced this. Okay. So then I'm going to my greatest mentor, and they couldn't really help me. They, okay. they, they told me the biggest thing is you have to be there for your children, no matter what, bottom line. Okay. Get yourself together. I wasn't eating. I lost weight. But you still love your children and your grandchildren. Be a man. They're watching you now heavy more than any time in your life. Okay. And uh, I, I've got with the church. I've got myself together, and, and I started doing things, and I met a beautiful young lady. And uh, a lot of times, as men, we have to check ourselves. We have to really know our morals, our principles, our bounds. Are you ready to date? You can't just go back in there. You have to be able to be grounded. Gotcha. And I didn't. And I want to take no disrespect from her. Okay. Beautiful, God-fearing woman. But we really didn't know each other. And as we parted, um, uh, I, I was spellbound because I thought, sure, this was going to be it for life. But there was a set of twins born, Malay and Malik. And uh, uh, I love them so much, but to be a father again from 21 years old and then at 48 was a big, 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 <laughs> big, big, huge change, huge, gigantic. Times have changed, diapers have changed, milk, yeah. uh, morals yeah. and principle. Yeah. Uh, but you still have to have what the Fed family always had, standards of conduct. And that standards of conduct was you still have to show them nurturing. Mm -hmm. And the biggest surprise were their fraternal twins. So, for the first time in my life, of all, be careful what you wish for. You just might get it, no matter what age. I know. My daughter. And uh, not taking anything from Malik, but Malaya and Jeanette is my mother's name. She's deceased. I had to uh, give her that because when she was born, she was first five minutes to see your daughter come into your arms and not taking nothing away from my son, man's man. But her eyes once the doctor got all the afterbirth out uh -huh. and looked at me it was a projection of wow all your life you pursued women you went after women mm -hmm. you conquered women mm -hmm. now you must protect this woman for the rest of your life mm. you must guard her love her respect her <laughs> through, through all the things that you did as and excuse me, a predator. Now you have to be a protector. And it was totally, totally not easy. But at the same time, it's a wonderful aspect. As I thank God to be living. You learn every day. Uh, Morgan, 
um, Minnesota University, uh, Drake, Harvard. There's no school, there's no college you can take a class for. <laughs> no degree you can get for it. It's on the job experience 24 7. And uh, you, 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 you cater to these, these ideas and thoughts, and you look up to people as my mentor I'm looking at right now. Oh, thank you. Wonderful, wonderful author who experienced this. And you know, uh, every time I see you through our trials and tribulations, uh, I ask you, what do uh, what color dress can I do? How to do hair? We had a conversation on that. I uh, mean, I have some rather huge, big hands, <laughs> and these hands were for to be the NFL or the NBA. <laughs> it didn't make it that way, and now they're for a beautician or we'll make sure that we just do your hair properly. <laughs> yeah, but uh, those times when I do it wrong or it's crooked and I have to yeah. redo it, I'm trying, Ooh, and I will right. never stop. Uh, my father didn't stop for me. Um, uh, and, but the beautiful thing about it, her older brothers, uh, John Wade, my second son, is a Baltimore City police officer, mm -hmm. and his beautiful wife, Janice, um, they come and they get the twins and they take them around and they show them love and all. And they're always talking about John, Janice, John, Janice. And it's a yeah. blessing because that couple is so smart that by taking their brother and sister around, now I'm getting ready to be a grandfather again. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think some of the lessons they have for being around their brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. And which they were smart to know to help them with the next. So too, when you get another generation help another generation, yeah. that's yeah. a beautiful thing. That's a beautiful thing. Wow, you said so much. Um, I'm going to go back um, and touch on some stuff. And by now, if you didn't know, or if you can kind of guess at it, my guess is a comedian. <laughs> However, we're gonna <laughs> keep it. For the most part of it, uh, focus on the topic of fatherhood. Focus. Um, fatherhood. Um, a 20 year gap. <laughs> a lot of fathers experience this because of breakups, divorces, and, or even sometimes the death of a, of a wife. Um, because anything is not always break up. You know, unfortunately, a death may occur, and dad may remarry and have other children younger than the children 10, 12, 15, sometimes 20 years apart. Um, I myself had a gap in children too. But you say that you at 48, 48. a set of twins I mean um, what was one of your I want to say trouble worry stressful what was your first thought yeah hey, I'm a dad again not three years after my younger son but at 48 <laughs> What was your your, 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 your your thought about that? How am I going to be able to take these kids to the park <laughs> and a wheelchair and 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 men and and and, and, and uh, uh, I'm going to have diapers. They're going to have diapers. <laughs> you can't handle the truth. Uh, it, it was amazing. It if it wasn't wow. for the power of prayer and being grounded in the mm -hmm. church and having to go to. God Almighty, who grounded me, who brought me through being a correction officer, through a many trials and tribulated nights, you have to have some grounding. I'm not going to tell everybody, well, go join the church, do this and that. But men, you have to have some grounding. You have to have somebody that you can reach in, in this infancy. I don't know anybody that's greater than Almighty God. Um, to be able to close the door, cut all the lights out, cut the cable off, even if you have to cry. Many a nights I did that <clears throat> in my boxes and just ask for answers because I'm not as strong as I was in my 20s, Lord. I'm not as smart as I was in my 20s, Lord. Mm. I can't do this by myself. I don't make enough money, Lord, for mm -hmm. two children. I want to feed myself. But if you have homage, if you have uh, enough blessings inside you, receive the message one day at a time, one blessing at a time. You will go through a mess but that's all the trials and tribulations to receive a blessing. Mm. 
that girl, that female child of yours, I have sons and daughters. There's a difference in raising them. There's a different bonding. There's a different emotional, mental, and psychological thing with them. Loving my children unconditionally. You know, however, there is something about that daughter that we fathers, number one, and secondly, the sons feel that we have to protect. Yes. We have to protect this daughter, this sister. Yeah. We have to protect her from the known and the unknown, the seen and the unseen. Mm. <laughs> as she grows up um, one thing I said to myself at my first daughter when she was born I said one day somebody mm. somewhere mm. is going to deal with her intimately yeah. oh boy I'm getting there now with that in mind, my mind is already prepared that what I instill be a part of her life, loving her unconditionally, unconditionally, is going to make any guy, his job is going to be extra hard. Yeah. yeah. And then coming to me as a father. Amen. You know? Yes, sir. I joke myself a lot about just being fired three a little guy in height, but I'm a big man in stature. <laughs> That's right. So 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 you have to come correct when you want one of my girls. You gotta come correct when you want one of my sons. Because because coming and get one of my sons. See, you get my last name tacked on to you. Oh, point well taken. Point well See, taken. yes, sir. My son marries. You get ready to take on my last name, woman. Right. You're going to be his wife. Family. Right. So, are you just as good to my son mm. as my son is to you? Mm. Equilibrium. Yes. Equilibrium. There is no double standard. When it comes to wanting to marry a child of mine, mm. no double standard. Are you good enough for my child? Is my child good enough for you? And then what we don't do is we don't pick our mates the way that we should. Mm. Now that's a whole different story. <laughs> you too. I told y'all. Y'all know I like to teach on it too. You know, sometimes I can get radical on it, but that's a different story of picking somebody who you want to be with for the rest of your life, that's and that good. goes back to that father being there, <laughs> yes, sir, consistently, constantly, standards unconditionally, of standards of conduct, always, all the time. I tell people everywhere I go is on quite a few of these interviews. That you can look over there and see a group of boys between the ages of 12 and 16. Wow. A group of girls over here the same age. Mm. And my brother, just by listening to them yeah. and watching how they dress, most of the time you can tell if their father is in their life or some type of positive male influence. It takes less than five minutes. Mm. Less I give five. it three. Yeah. <laughs> and if you're good, it's two. <laughs> Short math. Right? Yeah. Fine. In the course of your dad, your siblings, your oldest sons, your twins, you had one of the most devastating things happen to you in your life one of I'll say probably your best friend to leave you what was 
that way. Mark Robinson uh, was a great man. Uh, it's very rarely in your life, especially as a male, uh, without society, with people projecting, you have to be strong, you have to be outgoing. Uh, it mean an individual that, for not to be your natural born brother, no matter what time or day, will be there for you. Um, even when you're down to your last penny, uh, you can call, talk, conversation just to keep you straight, to keep you going. You can be on the road in Miami, you can be in New York doing comedy, doing things, and you're tired. And there's somebody calling and say, Look, man, when you get home, um, even though you didn't make any money for the show, that uh, I like to cook. You got a meal there coming to you. Uh, even when family, it's not there for you sometime and you can go through something horrific as a house fire and you lose everything that individual willing to even lose work to try to uh, help you get yourself together and get back on your feet again and as everything gets better at the years of your friendship of trials and tribulation doing things together going to meeting uh, people and you uh walk to work one day and um, you find out that individual is gone left your life so you gotta be stronger and they said um, whoever they is men don't cry, men can't cry but uh, Mark Robinson he was one of the of the many men that said it's okay to cry it's okay to cry cause you can release things and after you cry he used to say breathe Breathe, and once you breathe, you start thinking again, because there's always going to be hurt as long as in this world, mm -hmm. but as long as you're kind and gentle, and he always said, Ronnie, you, are, you have a gift to make people laugh. I've been around you for 15, 16 years, and I know for a fact, when you're at your down moments, in order to get you up, you'll say a joke or something to make some mouth laugh. Um, friendship is so precious, men. We are afraid to be friends with another black man today for some reason I don't know what it is but cherish that when ladies go to the beauty parlor <clears throat> when they get their hair done listen to how they talk they they talk to one another about issues and things concerning the house feeding the children growing when we go to the barber shop we're concerned about the next one we're gonna conquer who's doing who and if a lady walking there with a child and you know I'm telling the truth what's her status bringing this child in here and how can we get with her? We got to change that. We got to have just as much respect for our ladies out there as we for ourselves and for our friends. Wow. That rocks your world and it shocks your world. You um, also had a a greater friend that also left you a void in your life, uh, left you great feelings, good times, left you moral standards, left you the presumption that you are a great man, left you with the with the thought that because of me you're you let's talk about that person sometimes they say in life uh, things come in too and when I always call them the magnificent the great <laughs> John Wade Fed Senior when my father passed when my father left me I didn't know what I was going to do. I really thought that, and a lot of gentlemen don't know that your father can be your best friend. And I went through some uh, tappings, as I say, 
being disciplined. Some things denied that I still thought to this day I should have got. But as a man, mm -hmm. I see now why this wasn't good. Why the decision was made not to do this then. Because you weren't ready. You weren't ready. When I lost John Wade Fed Sr., mm -hmm. I had to stop crying like a baby at one point just before his funeral. And I looked at him. The picture that I had in my apartment. And he always was smiling that picture. For that day, he turned back just like I did one time when he had the discipline. I saw that frown, I saw that face, and I saw, be a man. Be a man. I thought, well, maybe um, I had one glass of wine too much. No, this picture talking to me. Be a man. I didn't raise you to be this way. I raised you to know that one day I was going to leave you. I'm not God. I'm of the flesh. You saw that cancer coming to my body. You saw me hurting. You knew that one day I was going to leave you. And as I was talking to you in the hospitals and things, traveling, I got you ready for this. And the same thing John Wade, Andre Douglas, and Ronnie David Fair Jr. are going to see one day when you go. But they still going to have to be a man. I love you, Dad. Thanks for everything. And I know you're still over me right now. Very touching moment in your life at that time. Um that a lot can relate to others like myself can't relate to the goodness the greatness the magnificentness the spectacular the the grand the imminent you know all the big words that can mean good to you when it comes to the kind of father that you had and the kind of father that you've become yes. and your sons now we're talking about the reverse generational curse we have three generations of good fathers in this fat family three And it could go on to four. My host is also a, as I said earlier, before we close out, um, he's a comedian and he's uh, traveled. You know what? I'm let him talk to you out there on YouTube. Hello, Luke. How you doing, CJ? Forget about the rest. You're about to see the very, very best. It is hard to be in the field of humor. The hardest thing there is to make a person laugh. <laughs> when you get out the airport, hey, you're so and so, Mr. DC, dark chocolate, make me laugh. You might have just got some bad news. You might have just found out you lost your job. <laughs> make me laugh. Make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter cures a lot. And when you're open enough to be able to talk to anybody, any race, any time, and just go tickle, tickle, tickle. And put a smile on their face. You've done a lot. People have so much tragic in their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, I work with you. Um, I've tried to do the reverse. What dad gave me being a salesman. Salesman, talk, 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 talk. Sell, sell, sell. My grandfather, minister, always playing. And may God bless you completely. <laughs> and equivocally, you use all those tools. Mm -hmm. You put it in the pot. You add some oodles and oodles. You mix it all up and you come up with a meal of laughter of always saying something kind to somebody every day. It's something about someone that you would like. Stop looking at the negative. That shirt, that tie, that lady's way that dress that well, and you'll receive it back. Mm -hmm. You'll feel better. Blood pressure will go down. Make them laugh. Make them laugh. Make them laugh! <laughs> <laughs> you have traveled also in the U.S. Uh, with some folks that I hope that they are watching this video so that you can reunite. Ricky Shackleford, where are you? I need you, man. Come back. You're the best. Well, you're the okay manager a man could have. Ricky! 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 Okay. Yes. Once again, once again. <laughs> 
This is International Fathers. I'm your host and your creator, Nelson Moody Sr. <laughs> fathers, 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 fathers. Call those children. And children, 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 call those fathers. And fathers, 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 hug those children. Hug them, hug them, hug them, hug them. Oh. <laughs> and children, children, children. Coco, <laughs> Coco, Hug those fathers. Until next time.